So nothing has changed in the overall prognosis for crypto as a whole. Yeah, it was bad. It was bloody. It was awful. Lost a lot of money. So did I. I've been losing money probably since February, January. But if you believe in the underlying thesis about crypto in general and Bitcoin in particular, then not, there's nothing really has changed. Now is actually if, <laughs> if you can buy the dip, if you have any money left to buy the dip, now is the perfect time to buy the dip. Um, let's just talk Bitcoin. The, if you're a believer in what Michael, Michael Saylor's overall thesis about Bitcoin, which I happen to believe in, I mean, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. There are only 21 million Bitcoins in circulation. Of those 21 million, 60% of the people who buy Bitcoin are doing exactly what I'm doing. They are buying their Bitcoin, socking it away in a drawer, and never selling it come, come hell or high water. So at some point in the near future, maybe five years from now, maybe 10 years from now, there's only 21 million in circulation. There's going to be a price shock to the upside. Why? Because there's, there's scarcity is built into the protocol. What makes a diamond valuable is its rarity. What makes gold valuable is its scarcity. Bitcoin has scarcity built into the protocol. Only 21 million coins in circulation ever, which means people are going to buy them and take them, do exactly what I'm doing, put them in the sock drawer, and never think about it again. And at some point, there's going to be a very limited amount of Bitcoin in circulation. And at that point, there will be a price shock to the upside and probably never Bitcoin will never come down at that point. I mean, I don't see what would what would bring it down. Until that time, yeah, expect volatility. The thing that's really frustrating about right now is that Bitcoin and crypto in general, first of all, crypto responds to Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes down, everything goes down. Now, there's no necessar necessarily rhyme or reason or logic to that. If you invested in uh, Mana, for example, or Sandbox, those are games. A set, a, ostensibly, the logic of those, the value of those coins, log rising or falling is based on the game itself and how many people are playing the game and is there value to the game itself should have nothing to do with bitcoin but we're not at the place where the market is matured to the point that some things can go up when bitcoin goes down as of right now bitcoin is acting like a risk-off asset so if the stock market goes down bitcoin goes down which is exasperating and everything falls in response to bitcoin now I still say it's a really good time if you have money left to start investing in Bitcoin. In, and I also really, really believe in the space still. Cryptocurrencies is where it's at. Just on the metrics alone, the other, the, the other person I'm going to be bringing up a lot is Raul Paul. Um, there's a lot of people out there who are on the same page as I am. And the logic is pretty straightforward. He's got a thing he calls Metcalf's Law. And it's basically based on use case. If you look at where we're at in terms of how many people are dealing in Bitcoin and how fast the network is growing out, it is growing faster than the internet, which means 10 years from now, the, the estimates are going to be that Bitcoin, crypto in general, will be probably a $10 trillion asset class, and it could be as high as $100 trillion. That's not, that's not outrageous. That's perfectly reasonable given the rate of growth. So... It's where it's at. Yes, it's a very volatile period. If you have money left, I would invest it. Um, you know, I would, I would hesitate to invest in cryptos right now just because, you know, Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin. But the cryptos right now, you can make, it's pretty easy to make money when the market was going up. I was making pretty decent, you know, I'd make a pretty decent profit. I see that like, you know, sandbox, the meta coins were, were going up. So I'd buy a couple of the meta coins and sure enough, you know, within a very short period of time, I'd have doubled my money. That's hard to do right now. So you might want to hesitate on investing in crypto unless you're talking about for the long term. But Bitcoin is still Bitcoin. And like I said, now is the time if you have extra money to put it in Bitcoin and just hold on to it for the long term. That's my thesis anyways. As I, as I build the channel up, I'm going to be talking about, you know, the use cases for different coins. Um, there's a theory out there that 90% of these coins are going to fail and or as much as 99% of the coins are going to fail. But if you pick the 10 or 20 winners, you know, you're going to have a really good return on, return on your investment, better than anything you can easily do in the stock market. So that's that's the logic of what I'm going to be talking about on my channel. And, you know, I'll be I'll be dealing with each of the coins as they rise. But 
as it stands right now, this is still this is still where where it's at. This is the this is the this is the asset class that's growing. That has it's still early in the process, and you know there's still a lot of money to be made. You know you might want to be careful in the next couple of months, because the next couple of months, you know maybe maybe couple of weeks, couple of months there'll be volatility in the short term, but long term this is where it's at. Bitcoin long term for sure, and I'll, as I'll be dealing with each of the individual coins as they go, and we'll be discussing all of them: Ripple, Solana. You know, there are potential risks for all of them, but the but the the risk of missing out on the upside is bigger than the risk of staying out of it. So that's how I see it right now. That is that is the story.